We're getting super close to the turnoff for Yellowstone. And let me just say, it's, I really want to go. But I'm not. I'm on a time frame. I'm heading north. <laughs> and while Yellowstone is technically north, it's too northeast for where I'm going. But, oh, discipline. Keep the course. <laughs> You see something? Hey, hey! Hey, hey! Okay. I'll keep the bear spray close. You're keeping me safe with your nine teeth. Yeah, you would be the one. I love you, honey. Thank you. Thank you, baby. I love you, too. I love my boy. We are in grizzly country, my friends. Whole different ball game. Got my bear spray handy. Got all my food. I'm going to keep it up. And hopefully we'll stay safe. Gotta reacclimate. Gotta live in bear country like this. Rephrase, grizzly country. All right, we made it to Montana. It's beautiful here. It's 81 degrees. There's a slight breeze. It's beautiful. There's not much smoke here. It's not very hazy. It's clear. No clouds. Okay, maybe like three clouds. But that means we're back in grizzly country, you guys. So this has to stay close. I've unpacked and got my camp all set up the platform is ready to go so what I have done is I've gotten everything that's scented that's not essential to this moment inside and packed away I have everything organized in the event that we do have to hurry up and get inside so I hope I'm pretty bear away right now I'm just trying to be extra careful with like the dog food droppings with my food droppings keeping my trash in a safe space but so far the only thing that seems to be pestering us are the bees get off me <laughs> bees everywhere. Hopefully, I'm not really worried about bees. I'm more worried about grizzly bears. So let's go ahead and start cooking dinner. Tonight is chicken and rice and I need to put the extra chicken in little baggies and then put them away first. And I want to be very careful with the chicken juice. I feel like if a grizzly is going to come, it's going to be from back behind here. That's <laughs> where we keep hearing all of the noises. Every couple of seconds, we'll hear a little rustling <laughs> and the dogs will perk up but I think it's probably just like a squirrel or a bird or something. When you guys do that, I'm like extra alert. Having dogs and being alone out here helps keep me feel so safe. It also creates an extra element that I need to keep them safe. So it does create a little bit extra work, but in moments where I have my back to where I keep hearing all the noises, it's kind of nice knowing that there's dogs here that'll let me know if something sneaks up on us. I'm gonna cook this food fast, so I'm gonna chop it up. 
get my wipes out. Alright, dinner time. I got an audience. Alright, we are all settled. We've eaten dinner. I've cracked open my beer. We've had company already. A truck camper uh, came in and, and then they saw I was here and they started reversing on this road and I was like, no, nah, no, nah, y'all can come in here and turn around if you need to. I used to have a truck camper, like I get it. It's hard to navigate these roads sometimes, especially in reverse. <laughs> so they turned around and then went up and they kept looking. I haven't seen them since. So I'm hoping that they found a really killer spot. This whole area is like super cool. At first it was a little strange coming in because it was like all these ranches and private property and then and then all of a sudden the road turned into one of those forest roads so it's kind of like Colorado what are you barking at what do you see what do you see do you see something or are you just barking because you want to let everybody know that agron's here <coughs> are you the dog that cried wolf okay now pike is going all right <laughs> I'm not really sure what they're barking at. There's a, a log over there that kind of looks like a bear, but it's not. Right behind that tree branch is a is a log, and I mean, it kind of looks like a, a bear, but it's a log. So I think, I think Agron was just crying wolf. Good boy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I completely forgot what I was saying. Oh, uh, so once you get past like a couple of miles, and you get to this dirt road, it opens up to like this wilderness boundary. And there's like a several campsites coming in. They're a little bit more tree coverage than I would like, even though I'm basically just sleeping here tonight. But this one was the one that I wanted. And it's this big meadow and it's perfect for RVs if you can get it back here, but I snagged it. So sorry, truck camper, <laughs> maybe next time. But yeah, they haven't come back. So I'm hoping that that means that there's more camping on this road. I kind of just wanted to stay close to the entrance because I still have about a four hour drive tomorrow and I would, oh, this is gonna wear me out. Are you playing Wolf? I think he's just, I think he's just super alert right now. You okay, buddy? Here, come on. You need some loving. We're still at reacclimating to road life, you know. April to June, we were in the truck camper, so we kind of got sensitive to a lot of the sounds out there in nature because we were inside a camper for so long. Before that, it was two and a half years in the rooftop tent or in the platform, and we were kind of accustomed to weird sounds and just the sounds of nature. But now, I think it's just going to take some time to reacclimate. But we're in grizzly country, so I feel like I need to look. <laughs> <laughs> when he does this but anyways I still have about a four hour drive tomorrow to get to where I'm getting and I'm really excited I I've been, this has been a long drive. I've basically driven the 15 in its entirety. <laughs> so if that kind of hints to where I'm heading, I think you guys can probably put two and two together. And if you've been following my journey, this place is going to be somewhere that I've been before and I shared with you guys this time last year. So I'm actually really excited about it. And I get to see some of my friends again. And uh, I think it's just going to be a really good thing for the soul. But ooh, once that sun goes down, the temperature starts going down as well. That breeze is a little bit more chilled than, than before. So I think I'm gonna go put on a sweatshirt and hop inside and start working on some things on the computer and, and probably just calling it a night. I don't suspect anything all that eventful is gonna happen. At least I hope not. 
I'd rather it just be a chill night like it was last night and just get a good night's sleep because tomorrow is going to be a new day with a lot of adventure. So I'm going to go ahead and hop in if they'll let me. <laughs> I think we've got a little bit too much energy pent up. The dog's just got into a little bit of a tiff. Nothing, nothing crazy. Just a little, a little bit too much energy. So I think we're gonna go walk it off. This is important. All right, let's go for a walk. Someone's on a mission. It's pretty cool back here. Come on. There's our campsite. This big valley, or this big meadow. It's pretty cool. Gosh, day two and I'm already filthy. Ugh. I saw that Tacoma when I was driving in. Wonder if he has a campsite back there. What's up? You look like a little porker. Are you comfortable? Can I help you? Yeah? <laughs> my little porky butt. <laughs> my little porky butt. That's your brother. I'm happy to be back on the road. Huh? Are you hot? <laughs> It's not even that hot outside. Can you keep him watch? I'm on alert. Got the fan going so it's like super loud. I'm happy that my dogs are on alert because that makes me feel a little bit better. way colder than the weather forecast said. Like, my fingertips are cold. I'm not used to that. All right, you guys, I'm all packed up and ready to go. I had another wonderful evening. We slept really good, but we did have someone walking their dog on the road and it freaked the dogs out and I wasn't paying attention to up there. So I'm, I'm very thankful that my alert system is working with my dogs. <laughs> no bears, thankfully, yay! <laughs> but I'm heading into the heart of grizzly country, so it is still early in the game. Uh, last time I was up in grizzly country, a bear came into my camp, so we'll see what happens, but I'm not too worried about it. I was gonna make coffee this morning, but I had packed my Forerunner so good that I didn't feel like unpacking it to get to everything. So I think I'm just gonna stop on the road. Got a four hour drive to my destination. And when I get to there, and in that video, I'll let you guys know what's going on and what I'm doing and all the cool things that are happening. But until then, you guys, I hope you guys stay safe and have a blessed day. See you later. Bye.